All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here, talking uh, real music in real time for a few real people out there, just like you and just like me. All right, the CD of the day is Mecca Everlasting. Had a nice conversation with uh, Joe Vanna yesterday, who is uh, the mastermind behind Mecca, but he does surround himself with uh, some really great people. Great songwriter, great arranger. Mecca's been around for a while. I haven't really talked about it, um, but they're really good. Everlasting is the album you should check out. Um, if you like the music of Survivor, Toto, Foreigner, Giant, those sorts of bands, uh, I think you'll enjoy Mecca. There's nothing to not like about Joe Vanna in his band Mecca. So check them out. They're good. Um, also check out Modern Retro Radio, modernretrofm.com, playing the music that everyone else isn't playing because they're a great radio station and uh, they cater to people who want to hear the music by, you know, people that they're familiar with, uh, that new material that's not getting played on terrestrial radio the iheart radio industrial complex um also if you can support this channel please <laughs> um i'm gonna talk about some things maybe at the end of this video um uh, that people can do for me uh in the event that uh this gig at some point uh doesn't just doesn't work for me anymore and uh i'm you know it's kind of like prepping you know for the hurricane or whatever you got to have all your supplies and so forth so i need a backup plan i've got some things in place already and i'm going to talk about that but before i talk about that i want to talk about paul stanley holy crap batman um i did this video a couple of weeks ago where i talked about ai and how a singer now can sing into a microphone and something completely different comes out uh the audience is not hearing what the singer is singing they're hearing a 1995 version of what that singer is singing thanks to artificial intelligence and uh what paul stanley's manager calls enhancement yeah um so this article it <laughs> just spills the beans on the whole thing. And yet, of course, people are going to continue to show up for Kiss. Um, so Paul Stanley doing a sound check says out loud in between songs, we are not really playing. We are not really singing. It's all fake. Bull crap. Now, why did uh, Paul Stanley even bring that up? Well, you've got the uh, KISS stockholders there who've spent, you know, their life's savings. Uh, well, probably not. These are people with incredible uh, disposable income. And they're being treated to that whole, hey, you know, come in for the sound check, sit down. The band is going to go out here and play a few songs. Uh, and you can see for yourselves that we are not lip syncing, that we're actually playing the music. All right, so um, the article goes on to talk about, you know, the accusations of lip syncing and using backing tracks. So despite the controversy, now they say despite the controversy, um, the band's longtime manager, who, by the way, isn't really about slowing down the controversy. He doesn't care. His name is Doc McGee. He came to the defense of Paul Stanley earlier this year. McGee affirmed that Paul sang every single word of every song during their performances. Why am I smiling? Because the next paragraph, <laughs> it's like opposite day. Uh, he sings every track. Yes. So he sings to it. So he's not lip syncing. <laughs> it's a technicality. Oh, man. So if I'm in church, right, and I'm singing, uh, I'm singing to the song. Uh, nobody wants to hear my voice. I'm being drowned out, thankfully, here. So 
what he's basically saying is Paul Stanley is actually up there singing. But you're not hearing what he's singing, Doc. All right. Um, so he goes on to say he fully sings. And then he uses these two words. It's enhanced. It's enhanced. It's just part of the process to make sure that everybody hears the songs the way they should be sung. What? It's enhanced. So <laughs> follow this, okay? This is the kind of logic that a politician would use trying to explain a policy. Well, it's not really fraud. It's just abuse. And that's different from fraud. No, this is complete fraud. He's saying that Paul is up there singing along like Steve Perry used to do at the Giants games. He wasn't actually singing Don't Stop Believing." They're playing the track in the stadium. And guess what they're doing in Berlin? They're playing the track in the stadium. And Paul Stanley is singing along to the track. And you're paying, I don't know, couple grand to sit there during the sound check to have Paul Stanley lecture you and tell you, see, it's, it's not fake. It's not fake at all. I'm singing and we're playing. Can't you hear it? Can imagine <laughs> they have to get the sound engineer up for the soundtrack sound check. So the people who are there are treated to the same enhancement that they're going to get for you know being in the regular when they go to the regular show and these people are special because they get a preview of the enhancement before everybody else does i mean talk about cojones right this is just incredible um the manager continues here and he digs the hole deeper nobody wants to hear people do stuff that's not real <laughs> that's not what they came to hear he'll sing to tracks it's all part of a process because everybody wants to hear everybody sings but he fully sings to every song <laughs> are you getting this are you are you understanding paul stanley does sing he sings to every song you can't hear him singing it's enhanced okay so it's either a full track a full vocal track is being played and paul stanley is singing along to it or uh, Paul Stanley's voice goes into the microphone and comes out uh, like a 1995 version of himself. <laughs> a, oh my gosh. Uh, several musicians, including uh, Joey Belladonna, Justin Hawkins, and Michael Starr, addressed Stanley's alleged lip syncing performances in past months, while Belladonna and Starr chose to stay objective by saying they couldn't confirm the validity of the claims, Hawkins supported the Kiss singer as he said the band's performances were not only about their vocals. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a show. You're going to see the show? Yeah, it's a Kiss show, man. It's going to be amazing. Do you see all the pyrotechnics and jeans wearing all the armor and stuff? And he comes down from the ceiling and then he's got to sit down because he's too tired after all of that Whew. good thing this is the end of the road people it needs to be the end of the road um but the sad thing is you're gonna see this or hear this or not hear it or be fooled by other bands all right i've mentioned a couple of bands i think that might be playing around with this I'm not sure uh, if Aerosmith is going to be using this when they're out there. I'm thinking Steven Tyler is pretty good, but why chance it? See, this is the new thing. Well, if we have this technology, why not just use it? We'll fool people. They'll go home happy. They won't know they're being fooled. And uh, everybody, it's a win-win. We make lots of money, and they think they saw an actual live concert performance. Um, the great thing when I was a kid and I went to live shows, you know, you heard the studio versions of songs on the radio, but you would go to the concert and you'd hear the live versions and the live versions were creative. There were, you know, different vocal licks that were being uh, employed during the show. 
there were longer guitar solos, there were drum solos, there were even bass solos, you know? There were all kinds of things going on that people used to like. Now, they're bored with all of that stuff. Is he going to continue to play that guitar? I, I went to Journey, I don't know, I don't know if it was twenty the 2017 show or the one I saw last year. Um, people were complaining about, is Neil Sean gonna like stop you know he's he's noodling forever the solo is just too long i'm gonna go grab a 14 dollar beer and i'm like what <laughs> greatest guitar player not ever but he's in the top 10 or something and you're gonna go to the concessions because he's soloing too long um and that's the part of the show that i know pretty much is real now, again, I don't want to accuse anybody in Journey, but here's the deal. A singer can get up there, and they can look like they're singing. And the physicality that is required uh, to sing, all of that can be right out there for people to see. But when that voice goes in that microphone, it can come out as something completely different. And the AI is here. And I don't even know if Kiss is using that much AI. They, they just admitted he's singing along to a track, so he is singing. That's the punchline to all of this. Wow, that is so weak. <laughs> That's, for those of you who think, it, and hopefully they're playing their instruments. They may be playing their instruments. My guess is they're probably getting some help in that department as well. You know, I've heard this where um, we've got to beef the sound up. Um, it's a little too thin. You know, it's a big stadium, so you want to make sure that sound is really rich and full. And so we're going to layer it out there so people get the most for their money. You know, you might as well just sit in one of those old IMAX theaters or whatever. Sit there and have a concert, just go up on the big screen, right? And you'll get blasted with all the, the you know, the, the different 3D, 5D uh, technology, you know, as far as the, the, the actual visual presentation and how the audio sounds. You can get all of that just sitting there. And hopefully you would save a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> You know, you wouldn't get people, I know, you wouldn't get people coming down on ropes and so forth and, and surprising you on stage because that's such a shocker to see somebody lowered onto the stage. I mean, it's a show, right? So if you enjoy, you know, uh, professional wrestling, you, you would enjoy Kiss. This, this is pretty much what it's come down to now. And uh, look, you know, if I'm spoiling your fun, by just letting you know about this. If you're tuning in, you're like, oh man, I was gonna go to KISS. Just go to KISS, have a good time. This is their last tour. Have See, I'm even recommending you still go. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't spend that kind of money. And especially knowing that it's like, I could, why can't I get up there? Why, bring a fan up there, Paul. Have him sing along with you since it doesn't matter. During, during like rock and roll all night, bring a fan up there. Say, okay, we got Bob from Toledo here. Bob is going to sing along and it's going to sound just as good as when I sing it. Well, duh, Paul. I mean, it, it could be a real good time for people. It could be just this giant karaoke where it doesn't matter how bad you sound. I love this concept, right? This could be how people make money moving forward off this stuff. Just, you know, hey, did you get the VIP ticket? Yes, I did. Well, you get to join Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons on stage for a rendition of Lick It Up. It's, it's just going to be great. Wow, people. Now, if that doesn't kind of clarify where this is all headed, I can't do much more. I did that other video. You can go back and watch that. Um basically saying the same thing but here we have proof we the manager's like shut up he's singing he's singing along to the track therefore he's singing all right um these guys they're really singing this is mecca 
and their album Everlasting. You need to check this out, courtesy of Frontiers Music. Um, and Modern Retro, Modern Retro Radio. I've had a couple of people actually get back to me and they're saying, hey, I've been listening to this. I put it on and it plays in the office or it plays wherever. And uh, they don't repeat songs that often. And they play a huge variety of music, some of which, you know, is maybe out of your wheelhouse. I get that. But uh, you know what? Uh, it's the way radio used to be back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, when that free form FM thing was actually a thing. All right, people. <laughs> I'm totally done. Um, I'm going to come back and lip sync a video. Oh, yeah. Um, I was uh, mentioning at the beginning of this video, and I'm sorry, it's if you've stayed this long, you probably are a devoted fan of the channel. So I've got to really start exploring other places uh, to drop these videos. And some of you know that the channel is mirrored over on Rumble, okay? Um, I have made literally $2 and change so far over on Rumble. And yeah, money is a thing for me, sorry. You know, this is what I do. Um, this is what I've been doing for seven years. And it's kind of sad that the work that I've put into it, where it peaked a couple years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, um, is now just just kind of dropping, all right? And there's no explanation for it. Um, I watched uh, this gentleman who runs a channel called The Quartering, and uh, he's got a huge following. But um, he's, I guess, going to be leaving this particular platform soon. Um, I wish I had that kind of audience, but based on the production value and what I do, um, I don't. And it, it is kind of, you know, it, it's harder for somebody who needs to probably hold on for financial reasons um, and can't completely let go. Now, I'm going to be talking with the people over uh, at Rumble and, and just kind of pick their brain a little bit, see what's going on. And uh, so if you didn't know I'm over there and you want to subscribe, if you have Rumble, uh, it's on Roku, it's on a lot of different things now. So it's not this, you know, sort of redheaded uh, stepchild of YouTube. I mean, there are a lot of creators that are over there and, uh, you know, some of them are doing fairly well, but people don't adapt to different tech. I had a lot of people say to me, hey, you know, have you ever thought about going over there? And I'm like, I'm already over there. <laughs> I'm already over there. Um, sometimes the videos don't mirror quickly over there. And then they're a little slow to monetize. I guess it doesn't matter when they monetize. My guess is they're monetizing after everybody's already watched them. So I don't know how to fix that problem. Uh, I'm not getting a lot of views over there. <laughs> I'm not getting that many views over here, uh, but uh, maybe check that out, all right? And then in the days and months ahead, we'll see. We'll see what goes on here. Um, it's kind of leveled out, but I'm pushing hard against this force, which is literally working against how many people are seeing these videos. So, um, yeah, check that out. And also... Uh, Keep watching here, though. Don't stop watching. Uh, don't stop subscribing. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. Subscriptions are slightly up, but about 60% lower than they used to be. So everything has just been uh, really throttled back. And uh, it's not just me. There are many creators who are um, saying the same things. So that's my video. Sorry about the length of this video, but, you know, with Paul Stanley, you know, there's a lot to talk about. And uh, Kiss on the end of the road. And like I said before, it's probably a good thing that this is the end of the road. Uh, but who knows? It might not be. It might just be the first of many uh, ends to the road for Kiss.